Hello there. I finally got around to doing this video. I actually cleared the iron mine about three days ago, but I've been too lazy to actually make the video for it and upload it. I hopefully it will be less boring than actually playing SSS yourself. For those who are out of the whoop, this is where we get the stuff to upgrade the operator's modules so we can make them stronger. After I'm done with this, I'll make a quick video about which four stars are worth upgrading because I've been asked about it a lot. So, the squad we have here. For this team, we basically just want arranged operators. There's no reason to use a bunch of melee operators on the iron mine. You don't get rushed a lot and you basically just need AoE damage to clear everything. The first few stages are completely free. You just place operators down, they shoot everything. It gets harder after the fourth stage. Until then, I mostly just place random operators and watch them shoot stuff. The only important operators for this run, everything else is very interchangeable, is Pudding, uh, Ethan and Shaw. They essentially allow for an infinite style, so it doesn't matter how much health the enemies have, because they will never get through them. Pudding especially with the attack speed has 100% slow up time and massive massive damage. Grey can reach 100% slow up time too, but he doesn't have anywhere near the same damage, so there's no reason to use him, for the most part. With one notable exception, that we'll get to later. It's worth having at least one medic in the squad, because there are a couple of stages that have ranged enemies. Also, guards are completely useless, The other than Doberman, because she can be used on a, on a range tile. Every other guard for 4 stars is kind of irrelevant and it's best to avoid them. It's useful to know that you can actually afford to leak to enemies on every stage, so if you're not paying attention like me here, you can leak to enemies and you don't have to reset. It doesn't really cost you anything, you get the same rewards whether you leak or not. So that's something that can be you can make use of if you're having trouble opening at the start due to DP, or if there's some enemy with a lot of health you can kill. You may have heard that physical damage isn't as good in this mode. This is true, especially for 4 stars, because enemies' defense scales up to stupidly high levels, so they become very difficult to kill with physical. Though any operator with sufficiently high multipliers will still murder them easily. Particularly Chowder. You just give her attack buffs since she one-shots everything, as usual. Vanguards are not too necessary for the Iron Mine. You need them for the other one, but on the Iron Mine most stages are pretty slow, so it's not a big deal if you don't have them. This is the third stage. It's important to know that sometimes it will spawn ranged enemies from the top lane rather than just uh, melee ones, so that can catch you off guard if you haven't seen it before. This is the only st one of the only three stages I actually need a medic for if enemies spawn on top, but in this case we don't have any ranged enemies on top, so we just spawn cap and kill everything. Every stage basically comes down to deploy Ethan, deploy 5 snipers and then pudding, and then place show somewhere if necessary. Usually it isn't. A big reason why the earlier stages are so much easier is because the number of operators you have is less. It's kind of like a deck building game where you have a deck, a hand and a graveyard. When you have a few operators it's easy to get everything you need and deploy it, but when your deck grows to 26 operators, like what happens in the end, it's very likely that it will be filled with a bunch of trash you don't want, so it becomes very difficult to draw the things you actually want. We pick Doberman because she can be deployed in a range tile, so we get the 40% buff from here. And then Perfumer is the only option because she's the only 4-star. This is the 4th stage where we get a bunch of buffs if we kill certain enemies. There's three kinds of enemies. Basically, it's a Wraith, Crown Slayer, and some Slug that stun stuff. You kind of just kill them all with Shaw. They are all have very low weight, so any shifter just completely stores them forever. This is the dog that's Crown Slayer. I'm not sure why I was stalling it with Myrtle. Don't remember.
Indigo is really good against uh, single enemies like this. From the buffs that you can get, I remember what four of them do. You have the option to draw two operators or discard two operators from your graveyard and then get the points to draw two operators. The effects are essentially equivalent in terms of how much you draw, but the one where you pick what you can draw is better because you get an option of four operators, so you're more likely to get what you need, whereas with the other one you get random operators. There's also a device which gives you two stacks of whatever operator is deployed, which is useful for stacking up. Generally, most of these powers have the value of two operators. There's one exception that's more situational. It lets you retreat an operator, but keep all of their buffs. This is useful for making your strategy more reliable. If you get your core operator early, and then you can't get any buffs on them, you can use this to... like if you get half the buffs, but you need the rest of the buffs for the last wave, you can use that device to reset it. De retreat them, then deploy something else, then deploy them again. We'll slow down on the later stages, but the first ones are extremely brainless. It's just deploy casters and shoot everything. So we're not missing much by going at full speed. The devices we got were the two buffs for um, operator buffs and the one that discards two operators from the graveyard. Kudenku will get surprisingly good with a bunch of SP buffs, but I've never found much reason to prioritize buffing her over, the, over Pudding, and I usually don't have enough operators to buff both. This is the other stage that has a bunch of ranged enemies. Um, you just need something to kill the bears early, or something to block. You, I can just use Shaw because she was in the squad, so even if I don't get any other melee operator, it's not a problem. But we have Doberman here, so we use that. We look leak to Sludge to not paying attention, but it doesn't matter. The lives are useful that way. AA snipers are pretty good here, DP wise, because they barely cost anything to deploy and you get the full value out of them. It's the same buff as if you deploy Pinecone to buff someone and uh, Cruise, you still get 40% attack. So low DP units are get a good bonus here. Here we just use Chiriyuki to proc all the ranged enemies, so they don't have um, the illusion. It's not a big deal if she doesn't, because sh they have very low weight and we have slow, so shall we just stall them forever? The only stages I kind of liked uh, from this mode were LT6 and from the other one LT8. The one where you fight a big uh, rock. Those were the only ones that actually had multiple lanes, so you kind of had to pay attention. For most of the other stages you just kind of stack stuff up. Into one dev bow and shoot everything. Okay, so this is the stage I enjoy the most from this mode. You have a bunch of boats on the right that then go to the back and a bunch of tanky enemies coming from the front. You need some caster to deal with the boats and the rest of the operators go on the left, basically. What I do here is I use Shaw with some vanguard buffs to push everything into the water so all of the operators can join up together and everything can hit both the boats and the melee enemies. That way I have enough DPS, otherwise this stage is a bit of a struggle for me. We always leak the first boat. It's not impossible to kill it, but um, it's a hassle and just depends on what you draw. We're buffing Myrtle, so Shao has the SP regeneration. So Shao has Triva card stack, so she basically gets the skill loading almost instantly.
you kind of need a medic on this stage unless you have stupidly high DPS or a healing defender because the enemies kind of do damage on the later waves and they can kill a guard or a specialist if they're the only thing deployed. The only thing Shaw can't push are the shield guards, but she still stows them a bit and Ethan can then bind them while they're out of range. And Pure Stream can use her skill to heal even multiple ones, so they're not a threat. Luckily for me I'm only getting the models for 4 stars, so it'll be done in a bit more. The only 4 star models that really matter are Cutter, Eaton and Pure Streams. Everything else is a gimmick. Those ones just give such a massive stat boost that they're unskippable. Especially Eaton's. He has the most broken model upgrade in the game, I think. Maybe some 6 star has something better. But relative to his base strength, his model is just ridiculous. It makes him bind everything forever. We got a million enemies we can't kill, but it doesn't matter, because they all go into the sea. Because Ethan keeps binding the shield guards, they keep, even they get pushed into the water, even though Shao can barely push them. This will work much better with something like Feeter, with the extra push strength. She can just smash them into the wall. Okay, two more to go. The seventh stage is much, much easier than the sixth. To be honest, I think the sixth stage is a bit harder than the boss stage as well. This stage just has defense crushers and wancers. They are all easy to just stow out and shoot everything. So you just stack up all your operators and shoot them. Again, melee operators are kind of wasted. So you just want range operators, same as every other stage. There is something notable on this stage. The rocks on it are bugged, and it's possible for a defense crusher to stun the rocks for some reason. The way I deployed Shao was completely pointless, and she's going to spend the run doing nothing, because no, nothing is going to reach her tile. The Lancers go in a straight line and break the rocks to try and reach the box, and everything else will get murdered by pudding. This stage is really easy, so it makes zero difference how I deploy Shaw. But it could have caused some issues. I sh it, she should have been behind the rocks, behind Pudik. So if once her makes it there, she can knock them back. Or alternatively, on that tile above Ethan and pushing things down. Either of those would have worked better. Anyhow, a bunch of Wancers are coming, we just spam the skills, and everything dies. Something annoying here is that because the Wancers are set to crash into the rocks, they have lower target priority than most of their enemies, so your operators won't target them normally. Once they break the rocks, it's the shortest path, and then they get targeted normally, but before that it's really easy to leak some of them. We just changed Cutter to S1 in case she needs to kill some early mobs, because the rush on this stage can be a decent. We are removing all of the higher cost operators from the squad, so we can open safely and we can get them later. We don't want to get Pudding super early, because we need to deploy all of our buffs first, otherwise she won't be too useful. That's why we took her out of the squad. At this point, when you get to the boss stage, your deck is so big that you don't really get to recycle it. So once you use some things, the stage went before you get them back. That's why I can't rely on 
using pudding then uh, drawing her again. Most likely the stage will just end before that. If you have some good DPS, it's possible to nuke the boss right at the start. He isn't that tanky. The boss ability needs some explaining. So, he every few sec minutes or so, he costs a skill that gives you a card in your deck. It either puts it in your hand or in your deck. This is the one. It costs 70 DP. If this is in your hand, you cannot deploy anything else. When you deploy it, it spawns this crystal. It has taunt, so everything attacks it. Once you kill it, you get to discard some cards from your deck and then gain, gain 15 points to draw something. So the, bo the boss in a sense gives you extra draw, but it also has a drawback. It can spawn this crystal in your hand, but it can also spawn it in your deck. If it's in your deck and you draw it, all of your operators get stunned. It only lasts for a second or two, so it's not too critical, but it's a wasted draw. So the idea here is that you want to use the crystals he spawns to then discard the crystals that he puts in your deck. But he doesn't spawn them evenly, you can get more from one or the other. Or you can only get to discard your operators and then not be able to discard properly. For example, you noticed everything got stunned. This is exactly what happened. I discarded the crystal, but then I drew, and I drew the other crystal that was also in my deck, and everything got stunned because of it. However, the stun lasts for a really small time, so it's really not a big deal. To be honest, the only reason I bring a medic is so I don't get screwed over by the crystal RNG because it does a fair bit of damage and it can kill your operators. Normally I just rely on Shaw, but we have to replace her early to survive the opening, so we just end up tank tanking everything with Quora, which is also fine. Enemies have high attack here, yeah, but not Quora defense high, so we can tank them just fine. We don't really have the ideal setup for Pudding, where she has 5 snipers, but attack and attack speed are both decent. You get the same damage either way, because it changes the base stat. Uh, it's not an attack buff. So it scales with abilities multiplicatively, but we lose a bit of slow up time. It isn't critical when we're blocking everything though, that only matters when we're using Shaw. Something worth mentioning is for chain casters is that the crystal the boss spawns, they can be used to DPS the boss because it basically gives pudding 4 times normal damage if we spawn the crystal. So we're just waiting on pudding skill and then spawning the crystals for the extra DPS in the boss. As you can see our deck is just full of crap so we don't really want to draw. The only outcome is that we're going to stun our operators. The upgraded pure stream model, out healing Susuru and tanking this. After the skill and he kills my Tumaru, but at that point the boss has too little health for it to matter. And that's basically it. Uh, stack ranged operators, shifters are pretty good and just shoot everything. Chain casters are pretty worthwhile too. We do also get the model upgrade parts from events, so it's not that terrible. You don't absolutely have to farm this unless you want to be optimal. The worst part about this is how even when you do it completely like this, you don't get uh, it maxed out, so you need to start a second run. What I recommend in the for the purpose of saving your brain cells when doing this, and what I do myself, is to just clear the first three stages and then reset. This gives you both kinds of devices and you can just do that a few times and max out. The advantage of this is that it's completely brain dead and you can do something else like watch TV or something while doing it. Alright, that's it for me.